I just built this AI-powered art factory that recreates a TikTok content business where one of their posts hit a whopping 122 million views. Crazy, right? But here's the cool part. I automated the whole thing using AI agents and get this, no coding at all. Here's the kicker. With Google's latest image model, currently the best for creating images, you can automatically generate digital wallpapers just like these. Everything I'm showing you, it's all created by the system we're about to build. Once you set this workflow up, it will generate new art every day or even every hour if you want. Each time it runs, it automatically creates fresh prompts, connects to Google's image model, and posts new wallpapers to TikTok with music, completely hands-free. Stick with me till the end, and I'll share the top two ways to actually make money from this, exactly how those viral accounts are cashing in. If you want to get ahead of the game, spending some time learning about AI agents now is a smart move. This skill is going to be huge in the next few years. So yeah, watch through to the end. You might just learn something that puts you right at the cutting edge of AI. Now let's get to what really matters. Setting up this AI factory. To make it as easy as possible, I've organized all the prompts and resources you'll need right here on this page, inside our community. There's a special blueprint file you can download and import directly into the tool we're using. It'll build the entire workflow automatically, so you don't have to lift a finger. The framework of what we'll be learning is actually pretty simple. You can break it down into three easy steps. First, in this initial row of nodes, we'll focus on generating quality prompts. Next, step two is all about creating images based on those prompts. And finally, step three is setting up auto-publishing, automatically posting to TikTok or other social channels. That last part is totally optional depending on what you want to do. To get started, the tool we'll be using is called N8N. Just click the link here in our community to go straight to N8N sign up page where you can get a free trial. If you haven't heard of N8N before, think of it like Zapier or Make.com no-code automation tools. But what's cool is that N8N has been growing fast lately, as you can see from Google Trends. That's because it's super flexible when working with AI systems like the ones we'll be using. And honestly, it's not complicated, especially when you have someone to guide you step by step, like in this tutorial. Once you sign into N8N, just click Create Workflow in the top right corner to get started. Rename your workflow to whatever you want. The first thing you'll set up is a trigger. For this, we'll use a schedule trigger, which you can easily find. Let's set it to run once every day. Just leave the default settings. The trigger node is special in N8N because it controls how often and when your workflow runs. For us, it will activate automatically once a day. Now, if you look at my automation template, which I'll upload to our community, I'll walk you through each node step by step and explain what's happening. There are a few key principles that are important to understand when setting up something like this. So let's dive in. Our very first step is all about generating the prompts. Now this might seem complex at first, but a simple way to tackle it is to always start with the end goal in mind and then work backward to get the output you want. For example, in this step, what we're really after is this final prompt. Don't worry about all the details for now, but if you look at the highlighted section, you'll see it's a detailed image prompt. This is what we'll feed into our image model later to get the quality we want. With most image models, the quality of the output depends heavily on the strength of the prompt you give it. So our key is to keep generating detailed prompts that match exactly what we want. Breaking it down, there are two important elements in the prompt. First, the character itself. We describe their signature look so the character is recognizable. Second, the style of the image, which sets the overall vibe. Since we have these two elements to figure out, it's usually smart to delegate generating them to two separate AI agents, instead of relying on just one to do everything perfectly every time. If you look back at the first row of nodes, you'll see an AI agent that provides the style guide for each image we generate. Then there's a character agent that selects the characters for that style. Finally, a third agent takes the style and character inputs and combines them to create high quality image prompts. With that in mind, let's set these up. Start by searching for the AI agent node in N8N. If you're new to N8N, it helps to understand its basic structure. Every node has three parts, an input section where data from previous nodes comes in, a config section which tells the node what to do with that input, and an output section where results are sent to the next node. For our style agent, rename name the node to something like style agent so you know what it does. Change the prompt source to define below since we're not chatting with this agent interactively. Next, turn on require specific output format and add a system message. The system message gives instructions to your AI agent, basically its role or job. By default, NNXN says you are a helpful assistant, but we want something more detailed. You can copy the system prompt for the style agent from our community page and paste it here. If you open the system message, you'll see instructions telling the style agent what to do and what kind of output to generate. We ask for a random, descriptive,
distinctive visual style including details like where the character is placed, their size relative to the frame, and more. There's also a curated list of 50 styles the agent can pick from randomly. You can customize this list however you like to fit your own preferences. At the bottom, there's even an option for the agent to generate its own bold, diverse styles beyond the list. Once the system message is set, your user message to the agent is simple. Something like, generate a visual style. That's it. If you click test step, you might get an error at first because you still need to connect your AI model. To fix that, open the sub nodes, find the chat model, and select open AI. This is the model we'll use. If you haven't connected your open AI credentials yet, just click create new credential and add your API key. You can get a key by signing up on OpenAI's website. There's a link in our community to guide you. For the model, choose GPT-4.1 Mini, or whichever is best available. Now, your style agent is connected to OpenAI. Next, add the Think node. This lets the AI process its response before outputting it, which makes the results smarter. Finally, add a structured output parser. This ensures your AI agent's output always follows a specific JSON format. You can copy the example parser from our community and paste it in. Now, if you test the style agent again, you should get a nicely formatted style output with details to guide the image generation. Great! That's your first AI agent setup. The next two agents are simpler. You can just duplicate the style agent node to create them. For the second one, rename it character agent. Its job is to generate three characters for the images based on your niche, which in our case is anime. Replace the system message with the character agent system prompt from our community. You can customize the character list and exclusion list to control which characters the agent picks from. The agent also knows to consider character origin, clothing style, and color scheme, which you can edit as you like. For the prompt, give it a simple instruction like, generate three random character IDs from the list. And again, connect both the AI model and the think tool to this character agent as well. Don't forget to add a structured output parser here too, to keep the AI responses thoughtful and accurate. Test the character agent, and it will generate three characters along with descriptions. Perfect. Finally, create the final prompt agent by duplicating again. This agent takes the outputs from the style and character agents and smartly combines them into detailed image prompts. Use the system prompt for this agent from our community page and paste it in. In its user prompt, you'll dynamically feed the style and character data from the previous agents, so each run creates unique prompts. And don't forget to connect the AI model and think tool here too. Make sure to set the output parser for this agent as well so it can thoughtfully combine the inputs into smart prompts. Test it, and you'll see three detailed image prompts, just like we imagined at the start. Now, these prompts are ready to be sent to Google's Imagen 3.0 image generation model, which is currently one of the most advanced and powerful tools available for creating stunning digital art. Feel free to clean up and organize your workflow to keep everything neat and efficient. All right, so part one is done. Next up is step two. The goal here is to generate images from the prompts we created earlier. There are just a few nodes involved, mainly because of how Google Imagen 3.0's image generation system works. If you look at the final node in this step, you'll see that what we want are three media URLs. If you copy any of those URLs and open them in a browser, you'll see an example of the image we're generating. For this run, that's Goku from Dragon Ball Z, fully generated by the prompt we fed into Google Imagen 3.0. Now, let me walk you through setting these nodes up step by step. First, after step one, click the plus icon and add a code node. Rename it to list because what it does is take the three image prompts we generated and list them individually. This way, NNN treats them as three separate items. This is important because when we send the prompts to ChatGPT's image model, each prompt needs to be an individual item to generate images one by one. To do this, you can copy the script from our course page under the generate images section. Just replace the placeholder with this script. If you test this step, you'll see that it breaks down one clustered input into three separate items, which you can verify in the table view. Perfect. Next, we send those prompts to the image model with an HTTP request node. To do this, we first add a looping node right before the HTTP request. This node takes the list of prompts and breaks them down into separate items, so each prompt can be processed individually. Set the method to post because we're posting a request to Google Imagine's API, sending the prompt and receiving the generated image back. The HTTP request node is widely used in N8N workflows because it's flexible and allows connecting to any third-party service through APIs. Paste the API endpoint URL available in our course page. This URL points to Google Imagine 3.0's image generation API. 
If you test this step now, it may fail initially because you need authorization. To fix this, go to Authentication and select the predefined credential type, then choose Google Gemini Palm API. Click Create New Credential, enter the required host information, and add your API key. If you don't have an API key yet, check our community resources on how to get one from Google Cloud. Turn on Send Body, keep the format as JSON, and paste the JSON structure from the course page. Once your credentials are set up, test the request again. This time, it should send the prompts and return data for the generated images. Keep in mind, the output won't be images just yet. It will be text data encoding the images, which we'll convert in the next step. To convert that text into viewable images, add a convert to file node. I named mine convert. Choose the action base 64 string to file and map the data from the previous node into this input. Run a test, and now you'll get three actual images you can preview. Nice! Next up, we prepare for publishing. We'll use a tool called Blotato because it supports carousels and automation. But Blotato needs image URLs, not files. So we need to upload our images to an image hosting service first. And one important detail, Google Imagine outputs images in PNG format. But Blotato requires images to be in JPG. So, before we create a link and send the images to Blotato, we need to convert them from PNG to JPG. To do this, we'll use two edit image nodes in N8N. First, add an edit image node and rename it to get image size. Set the operation to get information. In the property name field, type data. This node extracts the size information from the PNG image. Next, add another edit image node and rename it to convert to JPG. Set the operation to resize. Set the property name to data. In in the input section, open schema and look for size. Drag the width and height fields into the corresponding width and height input fields. Add an option called Format. And from the drop-down, select JPG. This node resizes the image and converts it to JPG format. After configuring these nodes, click Execute step to run the conversion. Once that's done, we can move on to the next step. Add another HTTP request node called Create URL. Set it to POST and use the URL for image UR a free image hosting service. Turn on Send Body, set content type to N8N binary file, and map the file data here. If you test now, it'll fail because you need to register and get a client ID from ImageUR. Follow the instructions on our course page to sign up and create an app to get this key. Once you have your client ID, add it as an authorization header like before, but the value should be client ID followed by your key. Test again, and now you'll get URLs pointing to your uploaded images. Finally, add another HTTP request node to upload these URLs to Blotato, set it to POST, and use the URL from our course page. You'll need an API key from Blotato, sign up using the community discount and grab your key from their settings. Authentication, select generic credential type, then choose header auth and click create new credential. Set the credential name to Blotato API key and paste your Blotato API key under value. Turn on send body, set the body content type to JSON and choose use field below. Set the field name to URL, then find the URL you just created using mgirl and drag it into the value field. Click execute step to send the images to Blotato. Last thing for this part is to add one more code node called combine. This node takes the three separate image URLs and combines them back into one item, so we can post them as a carousel on TikTok. Copy the combine script from our community page and paste it here, test it, and now part two is fully done. All right, so we've got the Google Sheets node and the TikTok publishing node left to set up. Let's dive into that next. First up, the Google Sheets node. Just search for Google Sheets and select the append row action. This step is optional, but it's really good practice to store those image URLs in a spreadsheet. That way, you can easily find them later, maybe to upscale the images into posters or even sell them as digital art down the line. To connect, just create a new Google Sheets credential using N8N's Easy Google Sign-In button. Then find your template spreadsheet from the list. If you don't have one yet, no worries, we've got you covered. Click the link in our community to get a ready-made template. To make a copy, just go to File and click Make a Copy. That saves it right to your Google Drive. Back in N8N, select that spreadsheet and choose the Sheet tab. 
For me, it's usually Sheet 1. And AKN will automatically map the columns for you. All you need to do is drag the image URLs into the right column so they're saved properly. For the title and caption columns, you can pull that data from your first agent's output. Sometimes the mapping might show an error because it's handling multiple items, but you can fix that by replacing item with first in the expression. This just picks the first item, which is what we want. For the date published, use a simple dynamic script that returns today's date. You can find this snippet on the Step 3 page in our community. Just copy, switch it to expression mode, and paste. The only column left is the ID. For that, I like to use a simple Excel formula that returns the row number minus 1. This helps keep a clean, sequential log. When you run a test, you'll see a new row appended with all the right info. Now, the real deal, posting to TikTok. We'll do this with another HTTP request node, renamed to TikTok. Set the method to post, and use the URL I've included in the community page. For authentication, select the header OAuth2 credentials you set up earlier. This saves time. The request body should be JSON. And again, I've put the full JSON script in the community for you to copy. Switch it to expression mode when you paste it. Inside the JSON, there are lots of attributes. If you're familiar with TikTok's API, this will look familiar. A couple of highlights. There's an auto sad music field. Set to true, which automatically picks background music from TikTok's library for your post. The content field maps to the caption from your style agent output. Again, if that shows an error, just rename your style agent or fix the mapping to first. The media URLs go here too, uploaded one by one in an array format. And importantly, the account ID field is a placeholder. You need to replace it with your own TikTok account ID. To get your account ID, log in to Blotato, our publishing tool, and connect your TikTok account. Once connected, you can copy your account ID and paste it into the field. Once set up, hit test step. You should get a post submission ID. This means your post went through. You can check the status in Blotato's published post section. And if you peek at your TikTok, you'll see the three images with background music automatically added. Pretty neat, right? The music choice is actually pretty good here. These images match the characters we chose earlier, thanks to Google's image and image generation. I ran the workflow every 10 minutes just to see what kinds of images it would produce, and they're all pretty solid. You'll notice some really diverse styles too, all thanks to the prompt setup we built. Keep testing, and you'll be able to create totally different characters and styles every time. And just like that, you've built a TikTok AI digital art factory. So today, you learned how to segment prompts for different AI agents. Use Google's image and image model to generate art and auto-publish it to TikTok or any social channel you want. If you want to turn this into a real content business, here's an idea. Grow your TikTok following, then use the link in bio feature to drive traffic to an Etsy store. There, you can sell prints or digital posters of your AI art. There are tons of Etsy stores doing exactly this. Just search and you'll find many examples. Or you could use Patreon to offer wallpaper packs or digital illustration subscriptions. Some creators have built huge followings this way with thousands of paying members. AI art is only getting better, so opportunities like these will grow. If you like this lesson, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps support the channel and our community. And if you're not part of the Freddy AI no-code community yet, check out the link in the description. So if you want step-by-step -step tutorials with automation blueprints all ready to go, come join the Freddy AI no-code community and be part of the movement. That's it for now. See you next time. Thanks for watching.